Hi guys and welcome to another video. And in today's video I've come back to the Usburn in Newcastle Tyne to recce what is going to be a very exciting photo walk that I'll be leading here in June later this year. But before I tell you more about this photo walk which I'm really really excited about let's have a look at this area from above. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you may recall that the last time I actually shot a video here, I was actually using a Bronica SQA loaded with Vectar 100 film. And I was really pleased with the results, to be honest. But of course, me and that camera, we didn't get on really, so now I've returned with a couple of Fujifilm cameras. Now, the first one is my much loved Fujifilm GA645 ZI, which is a, essentially a compact medium format point and shoot camera, and I, I love it. This camera just brings a smile to my face. There's just something about using it, which it's just a pleasure. And for me, that's what photography is all about. But interestingly enough, using the optical viewfinder on this camera, because it is a rangefinder camera, so you're not really seeing through the lens as such. You're seeing a rough guide to what you should be able to capture. So using this optical viewfinder did make me start to think that could one of the more modern Fujifilm digital cameras give me an almost film-like experience but shooting digitally. But of course for this to happen, it has to be one of the cameras with an optical viewfinder. And really, that led me to a couple of choices. Either the Fujifilm X-Pro range, the X-Pro 1, 2 or 3, which are all very expensive. And also it would mean carrying more lenses, which I didn't want to do. I don't want to buy into another system. Or alternatively, there was the X100 range, which of course everybody's after at the moment but it does have an optical viewfinder. Now I managed to pick up this X100F at a really good price. So my aim today really is to just shoot using the optical viewfinder to almost try and get a film-like shooting experience. Now I'm not going to say the actual images are going to be the same, but the actual shooting experience. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set it to one film recipe as such, shooting JPEGs and actually not review the rear screen at all using the optical viewfinder and see if I can get sort of 80% of that film experience using a digital camera. Now, if you know anything about the modern Fujifilm cameras, you'll probably know that it's possible to tweak all the color settings on the JPEGs to effectively create a film recipe, which a few folks on the internet with more experience than me have managed to tweak to effectively emulate film stock. Now, as I'm going to be loading Kodak 200 in the GA645ZI, I've decided it'd be a good idea to try and pick up a gold 200 film recipe for the camera. So after a few years on the internet, I did indeed find one. I'll put the settings in the comments of what I've actually tweaked into the camera. I didn't create this recipe. Somebody with far more experience than me did that. Uh, I'll put, also I'll put a link to their website so you can actually see their recipe. And I've dialed it in. And basically I'm just gonna walk around the Usburn, take some shots, do a recce of the walk we're doing. And at the same time, I'm gonna take a photo on my phone purely to get the GPS reading so I can make a note of interesting highlights to start planning the photo walk. Right, well so far it's been an interesting experience. It definitely sort of feels like I'm using a film camera. I'm trying to resist the temptation to sort of chimp on the screen, but you know, it's, it's, quite, it's quite difficult. Perhaps they got it right with the X-Pro3 that you can sort of have the screen not visible at all and you have to physically pull it out to actually look at it, because then perhaps I wouldn't look at it. But you know, I'm not going to go and get one, I just couldn't justify the cost, especially when they seem to have quite dodgy electronics there and they tend to break, so. Result-wise, when I have chimped, 
It's sort of got a film-like appearance to it. I wouldn't say it looks like Kodak Gold exactly, but you definitely get the essence of it, so that's a win. But what I would say, it is great fun just to be able to walk around with the optical viewfinder and take a shot and then carry on walking. And as long as you don't chimp, you don't really know what you've got. So at the moment, I haven't looked at all the shots I've taken. They've been on the screen, so you've seen them. Hopefully some of them have turned out. But you know, isn't this light film, really? If I shoot a roll of 36, I'm not expecting every shot to come out. So yeah, it's, it's fun. If nothing else, fun. And it's a fun camera to use. I'm at the top of the valley at the moment. I'm going to head back down now, back into the hearth a little bit more, and I'll have a chat with you about the photo walk. Right, so let's tell you a little bit more about the walk, because I'm proud to say I'm part of the Big Film Photo Walk, which is promising to be the biggest ever UK photo walk for film photographers. Now, let me tell you more about this walk. Now, basically, the Big Film Photo Walk is essentially record shop day for film photographers. So the aim is, is to get as many film photographers out shooting on this one day, which is the 29th of June, throughout the country. So there's various photo walks being organised by Analog Wonderland, who have been absolutely amazing in supporting the film community and getting this whole thing going, and it's, it's a brilliant idea. Now Kodak are also on board, and what they're doing is basically they must be subsidising it because if you join the photo walk, which costs £12, you get yourself a free roll of Kodak film, and you will also receive free film processing from Analog Wonderland. So for £12, you get to have a walk somewhere at a location near you. You get a free roll of film, you get free processing, all for £12, really. And you also have a chance of winning a prize if your photo should happen to be the best photo, photo from the photo walk. So really, it's, it's not a great deal of money if you consider what you're getting. And if nothing else, you get to meet a lot of like-minded people and to just spend a few hours talking about film photography. Now, there are two walks going on in Newcastle. Clark is doing Newcastle City Centre, so he's getting the pretty side. And I'm doing the Usburn, so I'm getting the more gritty side. And I, I love it here. Last year, I was actually lucky enough to be commissioned to do a big drone job, which will follow the Usburn all the way from the River Tyne, all the way inland. So I, I know this area quite well, and I know it's very photogenic. So if you're into film photography and you fancy a day out and getting behind this whole concept of getting film photography a little bit more sort of recognition, a bit more love, then I will leave the link in the description of this video and just um, follow it and sign up. I must hasten to add, there's no financial gain for me, so I'm doing it just for the love of photography, the love of film photography, so yeah, it'd be great to see you there. Now, it feels a bit perverse shooting digital when I'm talking about doing a film photo walk, but I've got to say, this has felt like a film experience. It's, it's, it's actually been really pleasant. I've been really enjoying it. It's not film. The, the resorts aren't going to look like film, but the actual experience, I'd say it's 80% there. I, I think, obviously, the big one is the fact that I've got unlimited shots, so I can work angles and okay, if I was going to spend a small fortune on 35mm film, I could do that quite easy. That'd be okay, it wouldn't be a problem. But the reality is film's expensive, so it's highly unlikely that I would take as many shots as I've taken today. And I think that's the whole reason why I've been using digital, because I'm doing a recce, so I'm trying to find the best spots and the best angles so I can sort of, on the day, sort of make suggestions to people for what I think works. But yeah, all in all, it's been great fun using this camera. I'm finding I'm accidentally turning the ND filter on and off all the time, which is a really annoying, so I'm shooting higher ISO than I need to most of the time, which is a bit frustrating, but, you know, isn't film frustrating? I'm not going to talk too much about this camera as of this point, because I think I'll probably, a few videos down the line, talk a little bit more about it. But first impressions are good, I've, I've really enjoyed myself, and I'm, I'm enjoying the shots I'm taking, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the fixed 35mm focal lens, actually, I think that's, that's quite nice, it's making me think a little bit more. It's a beautiful day to be out and it's a beautiful day just to be taking photos. And I think really, whether you shoot film or digital, that's all that really matters.
that's the final shot. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit different. I hope you've enjoyed the photos. I haven't got a clue how they've turned out. You've seen them, I haven't. I'm hoping some of them are quite nice. The conditions have been quite nice, but it's been good to have a bit of a recce. I've got lots of nice viewpoints lined up anyway. I think I'll probably come back and do another another couple of reccees just to see if there's anything I've missed. But yeah, I think I think we're gonna have a good time whoever decides to join me. So guys, if you do fancy this photo walk, link in the description, 12 pound, limited to 10 people. Really, I, I like small group sizes. I don't want to have hordes of people walking around in the Usburn, but yeah, I think it'll be great fun and it'd be lovely to see you. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you again soon for another one, and I hope to see you on the photo walk. Thanks for watching.